Okay, so this is a story that has been spinning around in my mind for a while, and I wanted to disclose this topic for quite some time, but it is very vulnerable, and I have to open up a piece of my soul just to get this message across, but I feel like this could definitely help some other people who find themselves in the same situation. But this is my story of how I came to find Jesus Christ or to find God in my life. It has been a long journey. I have exhausted all of my options, and we could start from the very beginning beginning and then I could skim all the way to the end. The beginning of my life, my sister was very religious. Religious is not really the right term. She was Catholic and I had no idea how. She just spawned out of the womb believing in Jesus and nobody else in our family really held that belief besides her. So I find it quite strange when there was no outside external person telling her that that's something she should look into. And then there was me. I wasn't Catholic but I definitely wasn't atheist. I was dead set in the middle for the majority of my life. I was spiritual and that's what I claimed whatever that meant I believe in the universe I believed in manifesting I believed in the power of the mind I was just always that odd spiritual kid and I would go to camp I would go to church I would go to these things when I was very young my sister would always introduce me to the group but I always felt like it was a facade or it was just a mask of positive emotions that were fleeting and it would go away after a week for me it was just coating my mind in positivity coating my spirit in some jolly good feeling and I would go home Home and the things would be the exact same because I truly wasn't connecting to God. I was connecting to the events. I was connecting to the music. And I was not even close to being in a place where I could truly receive that connection from God because I still was so attached to the world. And yes, I was young, but I was excited about so many more things and not going to camp, not going to these Christian groups. Although every time I went, I felt a sigh of relief. I felt great. I felt good, but I wanted to stay connected to the world. So that's what I did. And throughout my whole journey I never had a true connection with God and I never really believed in God but I was always spiritual and I was always trying to find that more in life there's always something inside of us that knows there's more and there's always this void this thing inside of all of us that we feel the need to fill with different things for me it was attention now this could stem from multiple different things like I grew up without a father figure inside of the household so my need for validation my need for attention could stem from that and so I went off into the world and I was doing my own things and I would find absolutely everything hoping it would be the crutch or the thing to fix that void inside of myself now when I was younger it wasn't really a void it was just something to chase to take my mind off things and yes as humans we love progression this is why people love to play video games the task bars the objectives just leveling up and chipping away at something day to day is very gratifying and fulfilling but also also, for me, it was kind of filling a void. I was heavily into YouTube in high school. I was extremely popular, but one of the biggest loners. Like, I was cultivating and creating a lot of attention, and everybody knew who I was, and I would navigate between different groups, but I chose to always be a loner, and that reigns true for today. It's just what it's always been. I've always just chosen to be alone, but I've used multiple things to fill that void, and I feel like YouTube was the first thing just garnering attention, garnering validation to fill something up or to make myself feel greater than I was. I was really trying to find the meaning of life and just clinging on to different things to find the meaning of life. And I always looked really deep into life, more than the majority. The majority was always caught up in this fog, caught up in this daze, but I was always looking at life in a deeper lens. And I was always spiritual and everybody would say, oh, he's an indigo child. He's a star seed. There would always be these weird, one-off things that were throwing me away from the truth and my truth is Jesus Christ I believe in God and that's why I'm spiritual because God works through the spirit the Holy Spirit and so on and so forth but I was getting caught up in so many different things and it was just constant loops of feeling like it was the truth but it really wasn't doing anything for me besides throwing me through spins and making me more confused about life because I knew that wasn't the truth I knew there was more I was doing Reiki healing I was doing all these new age things I was playing with crystals thinking it was trapped energy or preserving energy or protecting energy or keeping away energy or giving energy. I was reading all these different books, meditating, doing absolutely everything. And I believe that whole tree is just one big thing that leads into witchcraft. Like literally just think about this. Like you're playing with rocks at first and now you're getting into the book. Now you're meditating, you're doing all this mind work and then you're doing Reiki healing and you're doing all these things, but it's not the truth. It's not truly working, but you believe you're your own God. Oh, I'm manifesting. I can 
can create my own future. You're kind of building up this ego inside of yourself and you keep going down the rabbit hole because it's not the truth. It's not fulfilling. So you keep going down that line, down that line. I need more rocks. I need more new age things. And then next thing you know, you're Taylor Swift on a stage doing witchcraft. Okay, that's dramatized, but that's what I'm saying. So I was trying to find the truth and I just couldn't find it. And it was stressing me out because deep down inside, I knew there was more and my spirit was screaming for more. I knew there was more and I was trying to find that purpose. I was trying to find that fulfillment for literally half my life. It was driving me crazy because I knew this odd job that I'm doing, this matrix, this system, what I'm stuck in, this confined reality where this is all it is. You wake up to the grind, you go to bed to the grind, you wake up to the grind. I knew there was more and it was so stressful because the calling inside of me was so loud. But every time I would lean on my own understanding, this is a biblical thing. It says when you lean on your own understanding, it always leads to destruction. So every time I felt this higher calling, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go back into YouTube. I'm going to make these videos. I'm going to do it my way. And I would kind of be another duplicate. I would copy and paste what I thought would work. Very eye-catching, eye-appealing videos that would stimulate the mind. And I was following down that path of the Mr. Beast, the air racks. And I was just doing things that would quickly grab attention because I wanted to get there as fast as possible. And every time I would chase my purpose, I wasn't chasing God's purpose for my life. I was chasing my purpose for my life. And that's why it always backfired and it never worked out. Because my whole journey in life, I always felt this purpose. I always felt like there was more. Okay, I go and chase more. I fail. It never works out. Okay, I still have this calling inside of myself and I would just get extremely frustrated. And I tried everything and everything would just fall apart and it would never work. And I was just debating, like, why do I even have this voice inside of myself? Like, why did God just set me up to fail? Like, this is a nightmare. This blessing, this need, this craving, this spirit that knows it is meant for more, but always just ends up in impending doom or a dead end or failures is extremely annoying. And I know I'm only 24, but that can definitely be a nightmare because it feels like you're expelling your energy into things that never end up working. And it's like, okay, why do I have this voice? And it got to the point so bad where I got so fed up. I felt in my soul that I was meant for more and I kept trying to lean in that direction, but I was doing it my own way and I was being selfish about it and I was making it all about myself. And I was making music at the time. And then I went to this cabin where there was no internet, so I couldn't make music. And I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of this spirit that is so desperate for a purpose, the spirit that needs to be a part of something, but it's never there. And I was so fed up. I was desperate for a purpose. I was desperate for a calling. I was desperate for more in life, but it was never there. It was just always something I felt. But every time I reached, every time I tried, I failed. So I'm like, man, why am I even here? Why am I on planet Earth? What is my purpose? Is it to just be like everybody else and fit into this system that that kills our spirits, like all our dreams are dead, like nothing really matters. Like, is that why I'm here? And I would just beat myself up constantly to the point where I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna off myself. I had the idea, I had the thought of crashing my vehicle. I've told this story multiple times, but I never did that intentionally. I just always kind of fantasized of the idea. I know it's very sick. I was definitely tortured by demons or overtook by something that led me to this thought process because it's absolutely insane. But anyways, that's what I truly felt. And a couple days later of having this thought, constantly just in my mind of ending my own existence. I'm just being open. I'm being upfront. I never did this intentionally. I was driving, looking down at my phone and I looked up and my hand like jolted a little bit because there's a vehicle that was coming. And when I jolted, I got sucked in the ditch and my vehicle flipped and it rolled and it rolled and it rolled. And luckily, by the grace of God, I walked out of that situation without a scratch. I thought I was going to be paralyzed because my back was cracked and my back was numb and I was limping towards this girl's vehicle. My head was cut up, everything was cut up, and my back was numb, and I went to the ambulance, and I got in the hospital, and this doctor was sticking his finger up my ass saying, do you feel that, do you feel that, and I did not feel it, and I was so petrified, and I was so nervous that I might be paralyzed, and I'm like, really trying to feel it, I'm like, I don't really feel it, and I was just, you know, really devastated, and I was in a moment of severe panic, and I'm just very grateful that God got me out of that moment, but that feeling, that purpose, why am I here, still stuck inside of me, and it was bothering me. I'm like, oh my God, not this again. Like this voice, this inner dialogue, this inner thing inside of myself is unshakable. In that period, 
I was off work and I had a lot of time to think, obviously. And then I went back to work and it came to a point where it was layoff season. The top of the mountains were just filled with snow and only a select few were allowed to stay there because they didn't want a whole bunch of crews operating in that space with machines driving everywhere, causing a whole bunch of movement on top of the mountain. So they were cutting off people and still luckily I never got laid off, but it was to the point where the calling, the purpose was so loud where I wasn't really focusing or paying attention at work. And I was so fixated on what I was doing after work, which was videos going to the gym. And that started to consume me. That started to take over because I was staying up to like 1 a.m. making these stupid videos and going to the gym and it would be later and it'd be later. And I was just more tied to that than my job. And my boss started to realize, and he's like, listen, it's layoff season. Like we're already cutting off a whole bunch of people. If you want to go and do this thing, just go and try it. So my plan was I wanted to go to Vancouver and really try this thing out. An unknown city where nobody knows my name. I could just make videos. I could do what I want. And I, I could just get rid of this voice once and for all, or at least give it a shot to say that I did it. So I decided to go to the city and I started shooting these crazy prankster style videos. Cause I was watching Loaf. I was watching Gideon. I was watching all these explosive YouTube channels that were growing extremely fast. So I just followed suit and I was doing what they were doing, expecting the same results. Mine was an absolute nightmare. So the story starts off. I go to the city in my vehicle and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put my trust in God. I didn't really believe in God, but I'm like, you know what? If it's just me, I need somebody. So God, whatever, just I'm, I'm going to keep you at the side and we're going to have some conversations here and there, whatever. It was just somebody I prayed to for that extra help in that moment. But I don't know if I really believed in God. I was doing everything in my power because I was alone in this situation. So I started shooting these videos. It started off with pranks, just copying other YouTubers. And then I was doing some gym videos as well for reels. And I met up with this one kid who was also doing YouTube. He was doing other styles of video like RuneScape and that. And I was doing IRL videos and I pushed him to do IRL videos. He wanted to do that. He wanted to get into that. So I was in the city alone and he said, hey, crash on my place and we could just do this thing together. We can make YouTube videos together. And it was kind of like a business transaction of you help me, I help you. And he had a whole bunch of writing on his wall of I will devote my life to God. And it was a whole bunch of things about Jesus, about putting your faith and your trust into God. And I was praying to God in moments here and there. So I'm like, hmm, it felt like a synchronistic moment. I was asking and I was calling for God and this guy's wall was just written with all of these random things to do with God. And he didn't really believe in God, but for me, it was like a synchronistic moment and it really clicked inside of my mind. And I'm like, okay, so I got to really buckle down and do this thing even more because, you know, clearly I'm on the right path. Like I'm praying to God. Here's some biblical things. Okay. If I just put my trust into God. So my idea was I'm going to push this thing as far as it can go and put all my trust in God. And I was kind of testing God, but I was doing it for my own selfish reasons. This was not God's plan. This was my own egotistical, selfish plan of doing it all for me. And that's why everything went wrong. So anyways, as we do some videos together and then my stuff starts to pop off and he gets weird about it. So we had some back and forth and the energy was weird. I would leave and then I would come back to shoot more videos. And then his dad started getting involved with the whole thing. And we'd be fighting back and forth because he didn't want me coming over so often. And then his dad just turned into the villain of the story. Like just a guy I despise. I'm not going to lie. Like we almost got into fights at times because he just didn't want me to be there. But in my mind, I'm like, no, we are attached to the same goal. Like the reason me and your son are together is because we're working on the same thing. And he was trying to destroy the whole thing. So in my mind, I'm like, yeah, this is Satan trying to destroy our plans. Da, 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 da. And then, so I did a couple of reels and then I did one huge video that took so much time and energy that he got annoyed because I used it for such a huge project and all of his time and all of his energy. He's like, yeah, I just can't do that for you. And the next video, he's like, yeah, just do it by yourself. We were kind of going back and forth and there's a lot of friction. And then, so the next video, I shot this huge, crazy thing where I went bungee jumping and I had tarantulas on my face and we were going back and forth like this egotistical thing. It was just a battle to get it done. I finally finished the video after a long time of editing, listening to crazy, sad music because I was in my fields. I was alone. I was like in the library half the time. And this is really where I was connecting with God because I was by myself. And then the video gets corrupted and I'm like, oh my God, I literally went bungee jumping, had tarantulas on my face, went into a university with a megaphone. Like I did all these things and it got corrupted. It got deleted. So I had to do it again. And this kid was like, I'm not helping you with this video. And then my vehicle, I went to the gym and it got locked in a parkade because I didn't see the 7 p.m. close in sign. And so I went back and it was locked in there. So no, I don't have a vehicle. I'm in a fight with this kid. Our egos just don't want us to meet up. And that video got corrupted and my life was slowly just destroyed. And I was just really 
in my feels. I was so lonely. And this is really when I became dependable on God. I was running out of cash. I got a sleeping bag. I got a tarp and I was sleeping in some field and it was just pouring rain down. And I was just miserable. I was crying out to God. I was screaming to God. Now, there's a lot of missed steps in this and there's a lot of skimming. There was a lot of moments where I was sleeping in my car, not always staying at this guy's place. So there's a lot of moments where I was alone just sleeping in my car because like I said, I was going to go as far as I possibly could. I was taking this thing as far as I could. And every time I felt like quitting or something popped up that wasn't in my best interest, that felt like a roadblock, I thought it was God testing me. So I'm like, all right, God, I'm just going to go as far as humanly possible. And I'm like, you know what? I don't even care if I die or whatever happens, happens because I need to just figure out what's inside of me. I need to go full tilt into this vision. So that's what I did. I went no matter how bad it got. So I was sleeping in this field and it was downpouring. Water was dripping inside. And I was just crying to God for a place to stay because my pride was too big to call this kid and go back to his place. So I was just crying out. And it was one of the lowest points in my life. One of the most miserable moments in my life. And that's how everybody finds God. It's the lowest moments, the lowest points in their life. And that's because you are very receptive to any help. You are open to absolutely anything. You're an open vessel and you're not ignorant. You're not prideful. You're not blocking anything from coming in. You got open arms to any help you can get. So when you're at your lowest, where do you turn to? You always turn to God. Like if you were at a near-death experience, who are you praying to? It's usually God. When you're in the lowest moments of your life, you pray to God. So I was just praying to God. I'm like, God, if you are real, like, please just give me a place to stay. And I was seeing this girl from one of the videos, but she was like a background character in this moment. So anyways, I was just crying. I was tearing up and I was like calling her like being a pussy. And I was just explaining all my issues. Like, oh yeah, it's just life. It is what it is. So I put my phone in my pocket, go to sleep and I'm just drenched in the morning and some bum opens it up and he has crack in his pipe. And he's like, whoa, I didn't know anybody was in here. Do you want to smoke some down? And I'm like, man, this is one of the lowest points in my life. Like, this is absolutely miserable. I'm like, nah, man, definitely not. This is literally the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. I'm like, oh my gosh, I am here. And I was just broken. I was just so broken. So I called this kid back. I'm like, man, I really need a place to stay. And it was like a two hour walk. So I walked two hours to this guy's place, like drenched and it was in the city. So there's people everywhere. And I'm walking through these crowds, just looking crazy, just drenched, soaked my clothes are dirty and I just had this redemptive look on my face of I gotta follow God the only reason I can continue is because of God and I was just so focused on God like that was the only moving factor because I said I was gonna go as far as possible because I was leaning on God so I just kept going and I went to this kid's place and cooked up some meals did all that got a shower I went back to go see if my vehicle was there and I looked through the bars and I looked absolutely everywhere at every single angle and there was nothing inside because there was a little lip there was a bottom layer and that's all all I could see no matter what angle I was at, I could only see the bottom and it looked like there was no vehicle stored inside of the parkade through those bars no matter how much I tried. There was a top lip and above that top lip was my vehicle but it was so small that it looked like it was just the whole parkade I was seeing when I was looking through those bars so I reported my vehicle stolen. I thought my vehicle was stolen so I'm like okay where am I staying now? Like where am I staying? I didn't want to stay at this kid's place because his dad was going off on me. He didn't want me there and I still Still wanted to shoot these other videos so I went to go shoot this other video and I was staying in the weirdest locations I was staying in like slides crying out to God starting from scratch my car got stolen all my equipment got stolen my laptop got stolen all I have is a bag with a brand new old Mac book some headphones SD cards no camera and a battery pack for my phone that's all I have get my internet from like a coffee shop and uh, shower at the gym and tonight I'm sleeping in a slide. This one time I slept outside under a tree and I was crying out to God and then I went through this forest and it was just the lowest moment in my life. I had the video and I was just done. I'm like, oh my God, my pride was too big to call back to my family because it was a 16 hour drive. I just wanted to make it seem like I had everything under control. Everything was falling apart. It was one of the worst things inside of my life, but it was actually one of the best things because I thought I was fulfilling my purpose or finding my purpose, but I actually found God in that moment. 
moment. And that will forever change my life. And that is something that genuinely filled that void inside of my life that I was forever seeking. And it's through the lowest moments in your life that you can finally be receptive to that message. So I was in this wooded area and I was just crying. I didn't want anybody to see me. And I was just sleeping in this wet, damp environment, laying against these trees, soaking wet. And I was just so done. I was so defeated. And I was like, oh, I literally can't keep going. But because of God, I decided, okay, I'm going to do the second video. Let's get this BS done. And every time I've done things for my own will or for my own desires, it has never worked out. It has never went my way. It has always blown up in my face. It was always a dead end. Every time I tried things my own way for seven years on YouTube, it has always blown up in my face. And it, was just, uh, it sucks every time because I'm like, yeah, I got this purpose. I got this feeling inside. But every time I go and chase it, it always fails. Anyways, I meet up with this kid and he says, do all your videos by yourself. I'm I'm not helping you. So I go on this final stretch of doing this huge grand video by myself, getting all of these people to do this huge grand skit. I get crowds involved. I'm just expending so much energy to do this video for myself, like this Mr. B style skit that leads into a prank. And the moment I'm doing the final touches on this video, like it's been weeks and weeks and weeks of just putting gut wrenching effort into this video and just grueling days, grueling nights, and I'm finally finished. I'm at the library bumming some free Wi-Fi because I have no place to stay. Throughout the creation of that video, I was staying in three locations. It was outside because I thought my car was apparently stolen, but it wasn't because the parkade opened up eventually and I went back in and I seen that it was just a lip above and there was my tires. You could only see it when you were in the parkade enough. So I thought it was stolen. That was a relief. So it was either my car outside or this dude's place. And that's why I was connecting with God so much because I was so lonely. I was in these very lonely phases of wilderness seasons where I'm literally outside in random locations outside just crying, cold, freezing, building my connection with God. And then this video after putting grueling effort in, running back and forth, doing it all myself, setting up all these events and trying to get people involved in doing these pranks and things of that nature. The moment it is 99% finished, like this video was taking so long. I'm pretty sure it was a month since my last upload and I was ready to finally release it and it got corrupted again because the SD card reader I was using I guess it was bent slightly and I constantly had to re-import some clips and then eventually somehow it all got corrupted so I lost my mind and I was freaking out I'm like god like why do I have this calling this need for more and then I go out and pursue it and it's like every single obstacle is in front of me but in my mind I'm like yeah it's the devil blocking my purpose but I was just losing my mind and I was so upset and I was so furious and then this girl she said I could stay at her place because her family was off on vacation in their motherland or going back to their home country for a little bit so I was staying there and obviously this relationship was bound to fail I feel like the only reason because I have never been in many relationships in my life because honestly I'm an independent dude and I don't feel like I need a girlfriend the next girl that I'm in a relationship with is probably gonna be my wife because I can't see myself going in the other direction so to find a girl with good morals, good principles, the only way is probably through religion because you know what you're getting into. You know what they follow. You know what they stand up for, what they believe in, and what they're going to follow leading forward into the future. You know there's not going to be any weird mystery to it. They're going to try their best to be their best, and that's what it is. And I'm not going back in that direction anymore. So anyways, this girl said I could stay at her place. And I don't like bringing this girl into the mix because I don't like talking about anybody, but it does add flavor to the story. So I was staying there for a while and the reason I feel like I got in that relationship is because I was so far away from family. I was so far away from everybody and I needed somebody to lean on. So I got into a relationship. So I guess we had some kind of spark, although our ethnicities, our morals, what we believed in were completely different, but somehow, some way we connected and it was just weird. I was just in some weird relationship starting something in the middle of nowhere and it was because I was lonely. I guess. So this relationship was bound to fail because I wasn't in a stable place. My mentality wasn't stable because I was going through all these crazy different events that were not stable. Every time I stepped, it was like stepping into the unknown. And you should never get a girlfriend if you were not in a stable place in life 
or you don't have the fundamentals built up in your life, like you should be able to provide for her. You should have everything laid out because if you're overly stressed or you're dealing with certain issues, it's gonna play into the relationship. Or if you have certain things you're dealing with or struggling with and you're not mentally in the right place, it will manifest in the relationship, but it's always just bound to fail if you don't have a stable footing inside of life. So this relationship was bound to fail. I'm not even from this city. I'm not even from that place, but yet I'm acting like we're going to start something. And it's just, it was ridiculous. I was just lonely. Let's be honest. For my whole existence, I tried to fill that void inside of myself as a man. And I know a lot of people do this. They try to create bonds with people who are emotionally unavailable, who can't connect. And this generation is being trained to divorce this generation is being trained to depart when things go bad well they're used to one night stands so it's inevitable that one person eventually is going to walk out or cheat or turn a cold eye or turn their shoulder to something else because that's what this generation is built up upon is one night stands hooking up and then breaking it up hooking up with another person breaking it off and they're constantly doing that so every relationship in this world that is of this world is going to be very short term because every time there's a problem they can always Always look to something else to find that new spark to find that new flavor to find that new thing but they're gonna be spiritually dead because as humans we need that connection we need somebody we can trust and forming that connection with multiple different people is just not gonna do the trick so anyways my relationship with God was already pretty good I was on my last whim and this was the last video I was gonna do because I was running out of money I was running out of cash and I just didn't have the motivation like I was facing every trial and every obstacle and I was just fed up so I'm like okay I'm gonna do one more video and we're gonna see how this goes so at this point I was relying heavily on God because I didn't have family around me I didn't have really anybody to lean on besides this girl I proceeded from that moment on with the final stretch and I decided, you know what, I'm going to give this thing one more go. So at this moment, I had many conflicting thoughts. I was about to leave this city. I was on my way out and then my tire fell off my vehicle. So now I can't leave this city. So I was sleeping in my car in some random neighborhood, now trapped in the city. One of the bearings inside exploded and it fell off the metal piece to where it was hanging. I have no idea how that happened, but I got trapped in some neighborhood and I was staying there for a while and I was sleeping in some neighborhood and it was grueling and it was embarrassing. I would wake up and people would be seeing me waking up in the back of the car my clothes would be stinking and I'm like, oh my God. But I decided to persevere because I'm like, you know what God, I guess you want me to keep going so I'm gonna keep going. So I decided to continue down the road. So I started up this next video but at this point I had no money. I was sleeping in the back of my car and I was solely just relying on God. Like it got to that point because I needed to figure out what my purpose was and I felt like I was testing God and although I had no money for food the moment I ran out of money for food and the moment I couldn't buy any more food I randomly came across this bush on my way to the library to edit videos full of berries and full of food so in my mind I'm like okay God clearly want me to keep going so it's like everything was supplied every need of mine was supplied from God to keep going or at least that's how I seen it in my mind so I just continued to persevere through all of it because at this point my trust and my relationship and my intimacy with God was so strong that deep inside of me like everything on the exterior did not look right obviously but I felt this peace I felt this calmness that I knew everything would turn out okay and I knew it would be all good so even though I had no money my car was destroyed I was stranded in this neighborhood I had no money for food and I was living off berries my connection with God was now instilled in my spirit and that's one thing I picked up. So I continued to go to the library and I was like selling marketplace items out of my vehicle and I would buy like $5 bread and I would eat that to get this video finished. And the same thing with this video. This is when I lost my mind. Like I was up to about 90% of the way finished this video. I was shooting this final scene in the mall where I was like throwing fake cash because it was part of a skit and I asked these kids if they could filming and these kids look like stand-up citizens they look like gentlemen they weren't sketchy teens i believed inside of my soul that i could trust them they didn't look too bad so i'm like you know what this looks like a good group to hand my camera off to i was on the final stretch of this video i threw the paper and they ran away with my camera and all the footage on there i 
got some bread, I went back to the library, and I was just sitting there. I had many times where I would just like ball up and I would cry, and I'm like, oh my god, why do I keep trying to do this, trying to figure out what my purpose is, and it keeps blowing up in my face, and it's not working, and all of these things are going wrong. And then I decided, okay, I literally can't go forward anymore. It's time to call the trip. It's time to call it off. God, I went as far as I could, and I pushed it as far as I could go. It's time to turn back and go home. And that's what it's been in my life. Every time I go and I chase my own will, I chase my own desires, I chase what I believe is right and I lean on my own understanding, it always leads to a dead end or a path that never works out because it's not in my will and I'm not aligned with God's will. So throughout that whole trip, I found God and I gained a lot of wisdom on how I should move forward and progress in my life from here on out. So I learned a lot in that short span, more than I've ever learned in anything else. But I believe it was all God's plan because in my life I have idolized everything else besides God to where my attention, my focus was focused on everything that was external. Either I idolized money, I idolized attention, I idolized all these different things or I had distractions or other things that replaced God. So I felt like God stripped all of those things away from me so the only thing I could turn to, the only thing I could rely on, the only thing I could build a connection with was God. God. And that's where I truly built the connection from is by having absolutely nothing. Going through these tremendously dark periods in that season, going through the wilderness, going through all these moments, and having nobody to lean on besides God. And that's what built the connection for me. So when a lot of people are going through trials and tribulations and they feel like everything is lost, I feel like that's when they start to build that connection with God. Because if you have things inside of your life that you idolize or things that you lean on and it's not God. The easiest way to find God is to have nothing in your life because that's the only person you're going to be fishing your energy towards or reaching out to because that's the only hope you have left. And that's where I found God by having no hope left and building that connection by exhausting all of my options, leaning in that direction ever since. My life has been getting dramatically better ever since that period, spiritually, physically, mentally, financially. But after all of that, now I have this relationship for the rest of my life. I never have to go back to those periods in my life and I will always have this connection. Now I can always fall short, I can always stray away from God, but now when I stray away from God, I realize when I'm straying away from God, it's not as good as being with God. And that's a realization that I have never had in my life because I would just be depressed or I'd be sad or I'd be feeling down or under the weather, but I'd have no remedy. I'd have no safe haven or some entity to lean on or something I could turn my faith towards. There was none of that in my life previously. And now I have that. So when I do feel down and out, when I do stray away, it's simply because I'm leaning on my own understanding. I'm falling back into sin and it's so easy to snap out of it and turn back to God than it was previously because I had that connection and I know how good and how strong I feel when I'm connected and I know how weak and defeated I feel when I'm not connected or I'm giving into sin. And although that sin feels good in the moment, down the road it leads to death and destruction. So yeah, I was leading up to my final days and I'll go to the library and I'll go to Starbucks to get some Wi-Fi just to like dick around on my computer before I went home and I I really wanted a Bible. I was looking forward to actually reading a Bible for once in my life because I've always wanted to do it, but I thought it would be boring. I wasn't connected to God, so it was never something I wanted to do. So I was at Starbucks. I was in the bathroom. I was taking a piss. I don't know why I need to add that to the story. It's not classy. It doesn't add substance to the story, but I was just praying that I could further develop my connection with God. And this is where it gets quite interesting. This was my last day in the city before I was heading off to go home. I walk out and I see a table with a man sitting there and he had a Mormon book and now I don't believe in the Mormon's philosophy or what they believe in at all. But anyways, that doesn't matter. So there was a Mormon book and I was asking him about it and he had Mormons who were coming to the table who were going to edify him on God and he asked if I wanted to stay there. So I stayed there. We were talking about God. They were edifying me and then I went on my merry way. And after the conversations, these Mormons on my last day connected me to Mormons where I'm from who edified me on God even further. But anyways, on my very last day, I was walking through the back alley and I found a Bible, a pristine Bible, just sitting in the back alley for the picking. And I'm like, wow, like that is a clear sign that I cannot make up. I wanted a Bible. I wanted to get closer to God. And on my last day, before I'm about to leave and go back home, I have this.
this Bible so I can learn even further. So I feel like the whole reason I went on this trip to begin with was to find God while leaning on my own understanding and tapping into my own selfish desires. So I found God with that trip and now it's time to lean into God's will for my life because I've tried it my own way. I've always hit dead ends. I've always hit failure. I've always came up short or it's been the wrong path or it's never worked in my favor or whatever it may have been. It's just never worked. I've exhausted all those options. I've tried everything. So every other way that doesn't align with God or it's not a part of God's will sounds extremely unappealing because my whole life I've just met failure after failure after failure after trying to fill a void and I could never fill that void trying to figure out and scavenge the meaning of life and never truly finding it. But now, I've truly found it. Now it's time to move in God's will and not my own and lean on his understanding. So yes, hopefully you guys enjoyed this story of how I found God in my life. And just so you know, when you find God, it's not going to be in the prettiest moments. It's not going to be all glitz and glam. It's probably going to be pretty ugly because that is every single testimony that I have heard in my life. It's quite ugly. So anyways, yeah, I'm not saying that's what it's going to be like for you, but we do have egos. We do have this shell, this shield put up to where we can't receive or be receptive to anything else. So I feel like that shell, that ego, that pride needs to be broken so you can be humble enough to receive the message of God and he is willing to use anybody. So yeah, that concludes this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Voices in my head, they want my downfall. More I read my word when he died off. You know what I need and I got you. Sometimes when I'm praying on my knees, I get far You know I be fighting against my demons when I'm lonely Then I find out Jesus is the one I really wanted I know that you noticed When I'm alone, I keep it real Talking on the phone, but I know that you gon'